Hi, I'm Kyle from Darcy's Meats. We've got a locally owned butcher shop with a location in Edmonton and St. Albert. And today we're gonna to be talking about some different cuts of steak that would be great for your next barbecue. And I think you're gonna really enjoy them. Let's have a look. The idea is that we try to think of all of the, the options that are exciting uh, and that are great for quick, easy barbecue. So let's start right over here. These areas, or this, this section of steaks over here are some of the lesser known steaks, uh, less common steaks. So this guy here is the flank steak. Comes from the flank of the animal. Uh, in some, some parts of the world they call it the flap. And this is a great uh, piece of meat for making lemon broils. You can grill it as is, and then you know, serve it family style, something that's easy, easy to enjoy. And if you get it from a really nice high quality beef, you can cook it to like a medium or a medium rare. A lot of recipes call for it to be, you know, a tougher cut of steak and you gotta be careful you know, how you cook it. But I find if you just choose high quality, high quality beef, then the flank steak is fantastic. Just cook like a normal steak. This one is also uh, very close in location to the bavette. And the bavette is like the lesser known but far higher quality version of the flank steak. Very, very good for um, you know, barbecue. You would slice it this way, the long way, and then you would serve that you know, family style or to, to your guests. Then here we've got a skirt steak. Well, very good for making tacos. Uh, would be the tougher of these three choices. Um, you know, it's, it's a lesser known cut. There's only a couple pieces like this on every beef. Right up here at the front, we have the spider steak, also known as the oyster. This is coming off the hip of the beef. They call it a spider steak because all these fat striations look like uh, spider webs coming through. That's uh, only two little pieces like that on every single beef carcass. Very, very tender, kind of a unique steak. Definitely something you should check out if you're looking for, you know, a different and unique dinner. But if we move to the next section over here, we're gonna to start to see some, some pieces that are, are near on the carcass. They're very close to the, the flap and the flank. And these guys are some of the better quality steaks, the ones that you're gonna to want to cook for sure and the ones that most people are very familiar with. So this is a classic strip loin, right? This is a strip loin and this is a strip loin right here. So what, what makes these guys different? This strip loin is an end cut strip loin, a little bit gristly, right? Uh, still pretty tender, pretty tasty. This is a strip loin, like something that you would look at for a New York, New York steak or New York strip loin. It's a center cut. And you can see it doesn't have the same gristly parts. So uh, same, same muscle, same part of the animal, but it's gonna be uh, two different uh, names, and two different kind of qualities. New York strip loin is really common at a restaurant level. Or at a butcher shop, you're probably just gonna see strip loins as the only choice. This guy here, this little one, this is a dry aged strip loin. So this guy's been dry aged where these items have been wet aged. So you're gonna see a little bit different uh, quality in the water content from the dry aging. Um, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be, um, uh, you're gonna taste more meat and less water. So that's a pretty unique way of, of doing a steak. You're gonna wanna try some dry aged steak for sure. And the main thing that separates the difference between a T-bone and a porterhouse and a wing steak is going to be uh, some interesting results here. The, the wing steak has no tenderloin. The porterhouse has a, uh, sorry, the T-bone has a nice tenderloin. But the porterhouse would also have a nice tenderloin, but it has to have this gristly section of strip loin, meaning you're gonna have this line of gristle here, and what's interesting is this muscle is part of the strip loin. This muscle is part of the top sirloin. This muscle is part of the tenderloin. So a porterhouse has three different, three different uh, muscles all mixed in, or three different steaks all mixed into one. That's what makes a porterhouse unique. A lot of people will just say, no, no, it's gotta have a big tenderloin. But in reality, this T-bone has a big tenderloin and it's not a porterhouse because it does not have this third muscle. In it. So that's a pretty cool thing that not everybody knows about. Uh, also something that's kind of less, less common would be a tri-tip. 
So we just made a tri-tip steak. Not my number one favorite for grilling, uh, but it is possible to cut these ones thin, put them on a sandwich, and give them a try. Don't be fooled by all that marbling in there. They can be a little bit tougher. Uh, probably my number one favorite steak is the ribeye. You know, here we've got a, uh, a regular AAA ribeye. We've got a dry age ribeye steak here. And these guys are very tasty, very, very delicious. You know, and you can tell by all the extra fat, all the marbling, and of course, that's gonna give you a more tender steak um, and a more flavorful steak as well. These guys here are the spinalis steaks. Sometimes people call them ribeye cap steaks. Um, the spinalis is this muscle right here. That is the spinalis, and we would cut that off the ribeye, we'd roll it up fancy. It's a little fattier, a little more tender. This is far more, far more decadent. The, the leftover part, after we remove the spinalis, is this center cut piece. So you got a center cut ribeye here. No fat, it's all been removed, no tail. And uh, some, sometimes you'll see that called Delmonico. Although Delmonico is a term I've seen, you know, called numerous different cuts of steak have been called Delmonico. Some of the really crazy variations of the ribeye here, you're gonna see this monster with a huge fringed bone on the back. That's uh, commonly referred to as a tomahawk steak. Uh, it's mostly for show, because you don't, you know, you're gonna get the same eating and, uh, and enjoyment out of any of the other ones, but you're not gonna get to show off a little bit with a fancy bone. And a shorter version is called a cowboy steak. Every single thing on this table I have eaten, you know, like numerous, numerous times. Uh, but every time I always go back is always to the ribeye as my favorite. For those of you at home that really like to sous vide your steak for a long time before you sear it, Denver is going to be a fantastic choice uh, because you have tons of marbling, tons of flavor, and the sous vide can help to enhance the tenderness, make it in a fantastic tasting piece. Uh, one of the uh, higher quality, maybe lesser known cuts, the flat irons. These guys are ultra tender. I think there's a study done by an American university at one time that suggested a flat iron was the second most tender cut of beef uh, that was available. So for a grilling, that is a very tender choice. Lots of marbling, tons of flavor, and the only thing more tender than the flat iron is gonna be your tenderloin steak. To keep that in mind, uh, buying, buying your steak through the colder winter months, you know, the, the less traditional barbecue months, is gonna provide you well, usually a couple dollars a kilogram, uh, you know, uh, help in buying your steak. So that's a really good, really good thing to keep in mind, right? And usually around this time of year, we start to hear whispering of the beef prices climbing. So everything on this table, you know, if cooked correctly, is gonna provide you a phenomenal, you know, dinner, an enjoyable dinner. And just keep in mind, you know, how phenomenal do you want it to be? Depends how much, you know, you wanna spend on your steak. So if you've got a $4 budget, you can have a phenomenal dinner, you know, with a top sirloin steak, sous vide, you know, seared, dress it up with some really good cooking skills, it can be fantastic for a very low price. Uh, but if, if you know money is no object and you really want to impress and eat the best food that you know that there is, you can do you know an entire cowboy steak, you know, sous vide, grilled, and then you know sliced and served to your guests. And of course it's gonna cost you a much, much higher price, but you won't quite get you know a better steak. Uh, in in you know in Western Canada, then some kind of like highly marbled the marbling. I don't know if you can see the marbling in this particular cowboy steak is absolutely fantastic, and it'd be pretty hard to beat this um, without really hunting around whatever city you're in to find a quality that is this nice. Come see us in Saint Albert or Edmonton and uh, chat with us. If we don't have these items in the showcase, we can cut them fresh for you, set you up with something unique and exciting that you can cook. And, uh, you know, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it.